Welcome to Zila Food. Zila is the German word for soul, so soul food, but Zila food. This podcast is in conjunction with Zela Magazine, an online magazine bridging faith, cultures, and culture. I'm Ali Forti, an American Southern girl who travels and loves talking to people. I'm bringing you conversations from global movers and shakers from somewhere in the world. From these conversations, hopefully you'll be inspired to move and shake too. Thanks for spending time with me today. I hope you get fed, so let's begin. Yalda Hakim is a BBC World News presenter and correspondent, and she joined the show in 2012. She made her on-screen debut in March 2013, presenting a special three-part series of Our World entitled Iraq, 10 Years On. Before joining BBC World News, Yalda was the presenter of SBS Dateline in Australia. She has reported on Afghanistan's Kandahar province, Libya during the Arab Spring, and from the streets of Juba, South Sudan, as many celebrated the new country's independence, as well as on various issues from the Middle East, the U.S., Africa, and Europe. In 2012, Yalda was the first Western journalist to visit one of the villages in Afghanistan's Kandahar province, where U.S. soldier Staff Sergeant Robert Bales is alleged to have shot and killed Afghan civilians. She has interviewed the former president of Afghanistan, Hamid Karzai, traveling with him to Pakistan for talks with former president Asif Ali Zadari and Iran's former leader Mahmoud Ahmadinejad about peace in the region. She was also on the ground in Libya as the people fought for freedom from Gaddafi's rule and reported on the resulting refugee crisis in Tunisia as thousands fled the conflict. Yalda was born in Afghanistan and moved to Australia in the late 1980s after her father fled Kabul with his family when the Russians invaded. She began her career as a cadet journalist at SBS's World News Australia. She filmed her first story for Dateline in 2008 called Yalda's Kabul, where she returned to Afghanistan. Yalda was also a finalist for the Australian Young Journalist of the Year Award and won the United Nations Media Prize for the best Australian television news coverage in 2009. As well as as English, Yalda speaks five other languages, including Farsi, Urdu, Hindi, Pashto, and Dari, and is currently learning Mandarin. I sat down with Yalda, or should I say I had the privilege of sitting down with Yalda two weeks ago in London at the BBC headquarters, where we talked Afghanistan, women, and journalism. Enjoy this interview with BBC World News presenter and correspondent Yalda Hakim. Um, Yalda, thank you so much for making the time to chat with me today. Uh, yeah, so I'll jump right into it. How old were you when you left Afghanistan? So I was six months old when my family fled um, what was then the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. And they migrated uh, from Afghanistan to Pakistan. Mm-hmm. And then um, after a couple of years of being in Pakistan, they moved to Australia. Okay. And are you happy that your family left Afghanistan, although it's your home, it's where you're from, but moved to Australia where you were able to have better opportunities? Yeah, I mean, I frankly consider Australia my home because I spent the bulk of my upbringing there. Afghanistan, I see, as the country of my birth Mm -hmm. and a very special place that I will always have a very strong connection. But my upbringing um, and my education and my support network are all in Australia. So I do consider Australia um, my home. And it's not, um, you know... um, an irony that um, Australia is called the the land of opportunity it mm-hmm. really is and um, it's it's given me my big breaks and uh, a solid education and um, a great foundation so I'm forever grateful wonderful and did you always aspire to be a journalist yeah absolutely I mean I think I from a very young age I wanted to be a storyteller I wanted mm-hmm. to uh, travel to places and um, highlight various different issues uh, issues around social justice and women's 
rights were often discussed in my household. So it was something that I was very much aware of. Um, and of course, my family um, fleeing the Soviet invasion. So when um, the, the, the so Soviets left Afghanistan and then the end of the Cold War, these were all significant moments in my family's life because of their journey and therefore significant in my life. Yeah. And then it's very interesting that they would discuss women's rights coming from the culture that Afghanistan has towards women. How is that? Were your parents just very liberal? Yeah, I mean, I think they were incredibly progressive. Both of them are highly educated, middle class, um, a couple who have three daughters and one boy. And my father, I would consider a feminist. Um, and he very much um, advocated for us and the importance of having um, a solid education for his girls to pursue um, the line of work, the kind of career that they wanted. He was very much our champion and remains that. Okay, wonderful. Any advice to people who are aspiring to be journalists? Um, I did not study journalism. I did history and international relations, but I took a short course and fell in love with it. So, it, it is, and it's an extraordinary field. And uh, you're sitting here at the BBC um, uh, newsroom, and you can yeah. see just everything that's going on right right across the world from all of our correspondents so um, it, it's somewhere I love being I live and breathe um, the job and for me it's not really a job it's a passion and yeah. it's um, I think it's really important to remain persistent um, it's it's a tough industry and um, you know you have to um, remain um, determined persistent motivated and uh, first and foremost know that um, you know the story is the most important thing and getting it right yeah and any advice on do you advise that someone just start a blog or start a vlog or you know it's, fu it's funny because in the last um, my career now spans more than a decade I, I started um, working sort of um, in as a 19 year old while I was at university and then in my early 20s mm -hmm. um, so for more than a decade I've been doing this um, mm -hmm. and I think the times are very different in that in that period you know um, social media plays such a huge role people are able to create a platform for themselves um, using using video and um, and using blogs and things like this so um, I think there are so many more opportunities actually um, it was such a closed off um, uh, sort of um, industry when I was growing up in Australia and now it feels like the world has opened up and become much smaller so um, I think there are so many opportunities Opportunities out there for young people, but I would never underestimate the power of doing work experience, you know, reaching out to people in the industry, getting advice. Um, for me, it was um, it really was about um, surrounding myself with people who were within the industry and um, seeking their advice and being motivated and determined to get to get into this field. Okay, wonderful. Um, so one time I had a business trip in Toronto and I spent the whole time watching Al Jazeera, seeing like all the, the news uh, stations and I began to be depressed by the end of the week because you know this earthquake here this tragedy here uh, does that ever get to you you're seeing the negative things that are happening around the world I mean I often say that if the work I do doesn't impact me I'll stop doing it I think it's important to always um, you know not become desensitized desensitized um, to what's happening around you for the work to always sort of impact you um, and that is the reason I keep going again and again to some of the most hostile places on earth um, yeah I mean you know sadly good news doesn't necessarily make news um, and um, actually as much as it feels like um, globally the situation is grim and there is much more devastation actually we live in probably the best time in history and uh, poverty levels are at their lowest and you know you could look at a range of statistics that, that talk about the fact that um, we are in the best period in history um, on, for a range of um, reasons and so um, while 
we do see so much devastation, I actually always remain quite hopeful and positive as well. Oh, that's good, that, because that was my next question. Do you have future or hope for the future for the world, for Afghanistan, for women? Yeah, I do. I do. I think I, I'm a strong believer that things don't always remain the same, that things evolve and change. And um, I, I, do, I am hopeful yeah. that um, Afghanistan's fate will uh, change. And I do think that, um, you know, um, globally, it feels like things things are, are, are bad because we have more access to information and um, you know when something happens we, we learn about it very quickly but actually um, I am incredibly positive and hopeful. Wonderful. Two last questions. Um, as you know International Women's Day was last week and I hosted an event at my old uni and I interviewed Pr Princess Tessie of Luxembourg and I asked her this question. How can we bring men to the table to um, so that they can feel a part of the discussion on issues that impact women and then they can help make a change as well. I think it's incredibly important. You can't have um, a conversation about equality um, and gender gaps without men. Mm -hmm. They need to be at the table. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we are, have come to a very positive place, you know, on the back of the Me Too campaign and Time's Up and all these conversations and discussions we're having. How do we turn these conversations into real life action so that it does have lasting impact and change? And I think, um, I often tell people, you know, change comes from within the home, the conversations that you have with your children or with your partner. Um, these sorts of things happen within the home and the community and then, you know, the wider society and, and then globally. So I think it's really important there are a lot of um, great men out there who um, are champions for women and I've often said that my career um, and how far I have come has a lot to do with the role of um, strong men who have not felt intimidated by a woman coming through the ranks and having a seat at the table. Like your and father being absolutely. the first man. Yeah. Yes, yes and I've often had very strong male role models in my life and I think they exist and it's really important to highlight their important work and presence in the work of, of women everywhere. Yeah, wonderful. Okay, last question. What would you tell your 16-year-old self? Don't panic. <laughs> breathe. Um, everything's going to be okay. Enjoy the journey. Um, and work as hard as you did. I, I, I spent most of my 20s all of my 20s working on night shifts and, and um, you know, um, really kind of pursuing stories and, and motivating myself and, and remaining um, determined um, to, to become a journalist, a storyteller and the best version of that that I can possibly be. And um, I would feel that I would tell my 16 year old self to just calm down a bit but remain as driven. Wonderful. Thank you so much, No, Hilda. not at all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Wonderful. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for coming by. I hope that you enjoyed this interview with uh, Yalda Hakim, uh, the World News, one of the World News uh, presenters and correspondents. Uh, she's a very kind, down-to-earth woman, and it was inspiring uh, being in the room, the, the newsroom, seeing uh, all the journalists, uh, BBC World staff, uh, at their desks as the world news was going by on computer screens, on TV screens. Uh, the news doesn't stop and it keeps going 24-7. And being in that environment was inspiring. Uh, until next time, see you on the next interview. I hope you enjoyed this podcast conversation and that it fed you in some way to pursue your own dreams. Be sure to subscribe to Zayla Mag at zaylamag.com, S-E-E-L-E-M-A-G.com, where you'll be automatically entered to win our giveaways. And follow us on Instagram at Zayla Magazine, S-E-E-L-E -E Magazine. Till next time.